All right, word this morning that Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel did not step down, but he was indeed fired. But why? Already the White House people are leaking, well, he wasn't up to the job. I, believe me, he was up to the job. It was a job that he was given where he really was never really brought into that real tight circle inside the White House that makes all the decisions, which has put us into the incredible debacle that we're in today throughout the world. Susan Rice, Valerie Jarrett, read into that. So what really happened? Let's ask Toby Hardin, the Washington Bureau Chief uh, for the Sun-Times. He's been following this story. He's also the author of this brand new book called Dead Men, uh, Dead Men Rising, which is fantastic. Uh, Toby, first off, what's the insider account of why Hagel's not there anymore? All the indications I'm getting from people at the Pentagon are that he was forced out, uh, that the White House was unhappy with him. They didn't think he was sort of articulating White House strategy such as it is, particularly in Syria and Iraq. And uh, they, they didn't think he was up to the job. And that was, that's the sort of briefing, back, you know, the behind the scenes briefing we're getting now that, you know, he was, he was too passive, he, he wasn't the right person. So you're equally tapped in with the U.S. You've been here 12 years as well as Britain. But sure. what's the message when you have three defense secretaries in that shorter period of time? I think the message is one of sort of a degree of chaos and confusion. I mean, this was the person that President Obama trumpeted as, as the right man for the job only at the beginning of last year. Even, even yesterday when he was uh, effectively firing him, he was, he was saying to people that he'd behaved in an exemplary fashion and this was the right guy. So it's a, it's, it's a message that doesn't project confidence. What do you hear and what do you believe? That's a big question with some other things. So who could replace him? First, we hear a lot about Michelle Flournoy uh, or Ashton Carter. Uh, how do you feel about this? Now, you mentioned about uh, Flournoy. She could have a hurdle. Yeah, Michelle Flournoy seems to be the front runner. She would be the, the first woman Pentagon secretary. And President Obama, you know, made a big sort of thing about, um, about Hegel being the first uh, enlisted man. So there's a sort of a, there's a kind of a, I don't know, tokenism or symbolism in these appointments. But Michelle Flournoy is on record in an ad, no less, of severely criticizing um, Mitt Romney for um, advocating that troops should have remained in, in Iraq. And she laughed at him. She mocked him for right. saying troops should, it's a tragedy that troops right. are leaving Iraq. And we all know that uh, Romney's been 100% correct. Colin Powell, what would that do for... Well, Colin Powell is a sort of wild card. I think he craves redemption. He backed, he, you know, he's nominally a Republican, but he backed President Obama in 2008 and, and 2012. And I think he'd like to be in the cabinet. And I tell you, this book is great too, because if you want to find out who the people do, what they do when they fight the wars, you've got great he uh, heroism. It's not just about America. It's about this Welsh band that put up and fought off the Taliban uh, while the Marines were wrapping up. Uh, Dead Man Rising, what's it about? Uh, Toby, congratulations. Thanks a lot, Brian. Thank All you. All right, thanks for the insight.